Hello and welcome to episode number seven of By the Brook, where this week we'll be looking at the abundant emergence of animals appearing at this time of the year, as well as highlighting the magnificence of metamorphosis, nature's ultimate transformer. As we transition from spring to summer, many animals are undergoing drastic changes. We often associate new life with spring, and while it's true that many plants and animals come out dormancy in those early months, summer is when the process truly accelerates. Any gardener will tell you that many flowers wait to bloom during the warmest season of the year. Insects will arrive in force to pollinate these plants, and all those busy birds we've watched throughout the spring will be encouraging new chicks to fledge their nests. Over the past week I've seen many young birds known as fledglings come to my garden feeders. These birds will have recently gone through a remarkable transformation to be able to leave their nests. Birds are born in hard-shelled eggs. These are protected and kept warm by the parents for many weeks. This is known as incubation. The embryo develops inside the egg until it's ready to hatch out. After hatching, the chicks are fed almost constantly by the parents during daylight hours. They will grow and develop flight feathers. At this point, they're ready to learn to fly and will fledge the nests, hence being called fledglings. The fledglings will often stay with the parents, where they feed them and direct them to food. Birds are particularly vulnerable in this stage of their life, as they're not used to flying and struggle to take off, often falling prey to predators. Fledglings are different to the adults, as they will not have the adult coloration yet, often appearing duller, and this is to aid with camouflage. You'll notice the fledgling also has a larger and more brightly coloured beak. This is from where it was in the nest, trying to attract the parents' attention to feed them more food than their siblings. Eventually, by the time they're a year old, they will have gained adult feathers, becoming sexually mature, ready to become parents, and produce a brood of their own, thus repeating this process. So if you'll remember, way back in episode two, Ben was sat by this pond looking at a freshly hatched batch of tadpoles. And I'm really pleased to say that yesterday I was walking around here and saw a load of little tiny frogs jumping around the outside of the pond, which is just fantastic because it means that they've all survived to reach adulthood. I've also seen quite a few large tadpoles with back legs, which means that they're developing nicely. Um, frogs have quite an interesting life cycle, so let's see if we can find out some more. So imagine you could suddenly change your body and gain the ability to fly, jump incredible distances, or lift hundreds of times your own body weight. Sounds like something from a superhero movie, right? Well, there are some animals who dramatically alter their bodies to be able to do some of these things. And to do this, they go through a process called metamorphosis. In terms of vertebrate animals, amphibians exhibit the greatest transformations, and it's one we've been lucky enough to witness on the farm, with the tadpoles changing into frogs. I'm going to talk you through their life cycle and how it all happens. So it all begins with adult frogs returning to ponds to lay fertilised frog spawn. And this is a gelatinous clump which floats on the surface of the pond. For the next three weeks, the embryos continue to develop in the eggs until tadpoles are ready to hatch and emerge out. And in this first week, they stick to or very close to aquatic plants because they're not able to fully breathe on their own. So they absorb uh, oxygen that is on the surface of these aquatic plants. Eventually, after about a week, uh, their external gills and gill sac is fully developed, so they're able to breathe and at this point they've become free swimming. Uh, so for the next six weeks they are completely herbivorous, feeding on algae and plant material uh, and they continue to grow and the tail continues to grow dramatically also. After about eight weeks the hind legs develop first. And this is a key difference between newt and frog larvae because newt larvae the uh, front legs develop first, and also newt the RV are completely carnivorous as well. They will feed on frog tadpoles. Uh, so for the next few weeks, uh, they continue to grow, living on the fat stored within the large tail. During this process, the tail becomes smaller and smaller and smaller as they continue to use up the nutrients stored within it. After about 12, between 12 to 20 weeks, the front legs develop, and as well as this, uh, their organs uh, will develop within them and they go through a dramatic change and this can happen overnight. They, their mouths completely change shape and they develop a jaw, their organs completely uh, reconstruct themselves into uh, being able to suit themselves better for life on land. 
and as I say, about 20 weeks, a young froglet will emerge from the pond. And these are literally miniature little adults. They still might have a little stumpy tail, um, uh, which will eventually disappear when they've used up all the nutrients within it. Uh, and these are now ready for life on the land. And for the next two to four years, they'll grow and grow until they become sexually mature enough to come back and start the uh, process again. So just to think, they've started life off as a defenseless little tadpole, uh, not even able to swim on their own. And then they become an adult frog that is able to uh, be a top predator, they're carnivorous, they change their diet, and they're also able to jump up to 20 times their own body length. So they've come, it's a drastic transformation and it really helps them to be able to progress throughout their life. So sitting here, not only can I see quite a lot of little tiny frogs hopping about, I can also see genuinely hundreds of damselflies and quite a few dragonflies as well. Now the last time we came across these insects was in their larval form, which was back in episode two when we did a pond dip. If you can remember those ugly little wriggly creatures that we found in the bottom of that tub, they've turned into these extraordinarily beautiful insects. So how do they do it? At this time of the year, there is an influx of new adult insects, which will have recently gone through metamorphosis, including butterflies, ladybirds, dragonflies and damselflies, which all come out in force as summer approaches. There are two types of metamorphosis found in insects, incomplete, known as hemimetabolus, and complete, which is known as holometabolus. I'm going to talk you through the key differences to help you better understand this astounding process. So within insect metamorphosis, there are two types, incomplete and complete. And for incomplete, after the egg hatches, there are several nymph stages. And these nymphs are pretty much just miniature versions of the adults. On the final stage, when they do become an adult, the key difference is they uh, attain wings and genitalia, enable them to be able to disperse further, find a mate and reproduce. For complete, after the egg hatches, the larva remains in this state for it quite a while and it, when it's ready to, it forms a pupa uh, using silk and um, forms a cocoon to protect itself. And this can, it becomes inactive for up to a week or two uh, within, which, within which time it then completely changes its body form, become an adult and if it's a butterfly, a butterfly emerges like so down here. So there are some things you can look out for in order to help you uh, determine whether metamorphosis might have occurred in your garden or maybe even your home. Firstly, you can look for what's known as an exuvia, and this is what's left behind from, say, a dragonfly or damselfly, uh, which has um, emerged from the pond during its last uh, nymph stage. Uh, it's then clung to a plant and uh, metamorphosis has occurred, and it's emerged from that into a fully-fledged adult. The other thing to look for are pupa, or in particular chrysalises of moths and butterflies and these are left behind after the larva of the butterfly uh, forms the pupa normally on the inner plant or maybe um, yeah, sometimes behind your wardrobe uh, and uh, after the butterfly emerges what was left of the pupa and the, or the chrysalis is uh, remains in place so uh, you can quite easily go around and find these. How extraordinary that so many insects and other animals go through such phenomenal changes at this time of the year. We often don't think of the processes these creatures live through to get to their recognisable form in summer, but now hopefully you'll have a greater appreciation for the miraculous life cycles. We'd love to see photos or videos from your wild encounters. Perhaps you've spotted butterflies in your garden or found one of their chrysalises on your window frame. We'd love to see it. You can email us or you can contact us on Facebook. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to keep up to date, so stay safe stay healthy and enjoy nature. Now to quickly check in with some of our surprising wild encounters. My exciting wild encounter this week was catching a glimpse of a mink on my daily walk. These animals are a threat to British conservation, but extremely elusive, so it's still a thrill to see it. Natalie has found plenty of new insects on the farm and even found a ladybird pupa. But talking about emergence, how incredible is this footage from Hannah of a bee emerging from a brood cell? 
On a nighttime patrol, Carolyn was able to film this molting centipede. And finally, Sandra's had another amazing wildlife week full of fledgling woodpeckers and a baby grass snake. So make sure you keep your eyes peeled for your own wild encounter. Mm -hmm.